Coming up next on Hooton's Arkansas Football. Highlights from the fifth week of the high school season, including the Battle of the Bulldogs, Fayetteville, and Springdale. The rematch of last year's Class 4A state title game, Sylvan Hills at Stuttgart. A five AAA showdown between conference leaders Oak Grove and Atkins. And the five AA conference title may have been decided last night in Boxsite. Highlights of more than 20 games in the next 30 minutes. Plus, we'll share the love with our updated top 20 rankings from Jonesboro to Gillette and from Rogers to Robinson. Nobody brings you hard hitting high school highlights like Hooton's Arkansas football. Next. Hey, Let's go. Let's take it to him. You stuck it to him and you won it. This is our time of the year. And we'll begin at Fort Smith Southside. The Rebels won at Springdale last week to claim the state's number one ranking. Last night, Southside back home against Russellville, and the Cyclones came to play. Nathan Brown finds Kevin Elliott for a 7-0 Russellville lead. Southside answers junior Scott Eady bouncing to the outside, and that tied it up at 7. Russellville was up 9-7 at halftime. But in the second half, Super Team quarterback John Thomas tosses the screen to Southside's unbelievable Slick Shelley. He's going to come through all the traffic. Slick's just a junior, and Southside is just awfully good again. Final score, Rebels 30, Russellville 16. From Fort Smith to Fayetteville, where last night it was the Battle of the Bulldogs, check out Fayetteville's uniform for the coin toss. Those will change. A surprise from Coach Darrell Patton. Fayetteville, brand new uniforms about 30 minutes before kickoff. And the Purple Dogs were fired up for Springdale. They jumped to a 7-0 lead, but Springdale comes back. Senior Brandon Martinez up top, 31 yards to Aaron Davis at Titan. In the second quarter, Martinez again to Davis. Springdale's up 14-7. Late in the first half, Fayetteville Cedric Logan says enough's enough, steps in front of the pass and takes it to the house. 40 yards. Fast forward to the fourth quarter now. Fayetteville clinging to a lead. Springdale's backup quarterback, Dylan Adams. He's a sophomore. Hits Andrew Norman and pulled Springdale within five but that's as close as it would get. Fayetteville beat Springdale for only the third time in 24 years. Final score, Purple Dogs 28, Red Dogs 23. They have seen the light up in Rogers. The Mounties undefeated coming into last night's game against Fort Smith Northside. Opening drive, Rogers quarterback Johnny Brewer, he's a dandy, runs it in at six to nothing. Still in the first quarter. Brewer uses his arm, hooks up with Garrett Jones over the middle. 32-yard touchdown. The Mounties were up 19 to nothing. A little bit later, Brewer will hit Josh Hanks in the end zone, and Rogers is set for a showdown next week against Southside. Final score, Mounties 44, Northside 7. Bentonville and Van Buren both looking for the first win last night. Second quarter action, Bentonville quarterback Chris Harrelston hits sophomore Pierre Poquette. 60-yard pass play. Poquette totaled 158 yards receiving on just four catches last night. The big play sets up the touchdown. Harrison to Spencer McNeely. Bentonville's up 7-0. And Harrelston goes on to pass for a season-high 271 yards. And the Tigers win it. Bentonville 24, Van Buren 7. Budrow was in the front row last night for Jacksonville at Jonesboro. That's the KNEA radio crew with Budrow Chopel. Hi, Budrow. The game was tied at six in the first quarter. Jacksonville goes to the air, but Jonesboro's Terrence Cole pulls down the pick. That sets up Jonesboro senior quarterback Jim Harris strutting his stuff, a run up the middle for a first down. And Harris and Jonesboro would go on to convert turnovers into touchdowns. Final score, Jonesboro 37, Jacksonville 6. Undefeated Bryant playing host to Little Rock McClellan, a team that beat the Hornets last year and had quarterback Scott Peeler on the run most of last night. Bryant somehow would manage to total more offense than McClellan, but the defensive-minded Crimson Lions forced two Bryant turnovers in the fourth quarter, returning one fumble for a touchdown. 
The score was tied at 13, and McClellan wins it. Final score, Crimson Lions 27, Bryant 13. Watson Chapel celebrating homecoming last night, but Camden Fairview didn't make a good homecoming date. That's Fairview quarterback Rod Coleman doing his best Matt Jones impersonation on the option keeper and putting the Cardinals up 7 to nothing in the first quarter. In the second quarter, senior Charleston Grant takes the handoff. He's headed for the end zone. Grant would finish with three touchdowns last night, and the Cardinals are the team to beat in the 5A South. Final score, Fairview 34, Watson Chapel 15. The Lake Hamilton Wolves were undefeated, but the underdog going into last night's game at Benton. And here come the Panthers. Benton's Josh Morgan takes the screen. Nice game. And that sets up quarterback Justin Ray for a touchdown keeper. Benton was up 17 to 14 on the ensuing kickoff. Lake Hamilton's Cody Dorsey. He's going to find a seam, picking them up and putting them down. But Cody won't get by kicker John Hill. A great open field tackle by the 130-pounder from Benton. A few plays later, Lake Hamilton's Dorsey would run right up the middle. Lake Hamilton regains the lead just before halftime, but Benton would rally for the win. Final score, Panthers 38, Lake Hamilton 28. <laughs> Conway at Little Rock Parkview, but without All-State running back Peyton Hillis. But who needs Hillis when you've got talent like Kevin Wardlow? He scored on the 26-yard run. That made it 7 to nothing. He would add two more touchdowns and finish with 278 total yards as Conway gets a little healing against Parkview. Final score, Wampus Cats 35, Patriots 6. Little Rock Central trying to avoid the letdown after beating Conway last week. Last night playing improved Little Rock Catholic and Catholic was in control early. Rocket quarterback Stephen Head drills the pass to Brett DeCourcy and that sets up Walter Luska's 42-yard field goal. Lusk would hit three field goals on the night, and Catholic led this game 9-7 in the fourth quarter, but Central would rally to win it. Final score, Tigers 21, Catholic 9. Winless teams, North Little Rock and Little Rock Hall meeting last night. North Little Rock is up 14 to nothing, and William Lamar will bull his way in for his second touchdown of the night. Hall would try to stay close through the air, but Jamar Love will make the interception, and the charging Wildcats run away with this one for their first victory. Final score, North Little Rock 35, Hall 8. And here's a look at the new Hootons Arkansas Football Class 5A rankings. Southside stays on top. The Rebels have lost just once this season by one point in overtime at Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Fayetteville started the year at number nine. They're up to number two this week. Little Rock Central will play host to Bryant next week. Springdale has dropped three in a row and falls to number four. Camden Fairview's five. Then it's Conway, undefeated Rogers, Cabot, Bentonville, and Little Rock McClellan. Bryant falls to number 11. Then it's West Memphis and Russellville. And after this, in the top 20 rankings, parity takes over. Keep in mind, there are only 32 teams in all of Class 5A. Jonesboro's 14 and Texarkana's 15. The Zebras fall to 16 after losing to Sheridan last night. Then it's El Dorado, Searcy, Benton, and Forest City. As I said, a lot of parity in Class 5A after the top dozen. Now, Coleman Derry presents the Coleman Kid of the Week. Springdale's offensive attack is more balanced this year with plenty of passing and a powerful running game featuring standout tailback Zach Butler. Halfway through the season, Butler has already totaled more than 600 yards. He averages 17 carries per game and almost always breaks a big one, like this one against Shiloh Christian and last week's 68-yard rumble against top-ranked Southside. Springdale's Zach Butler, a 200-pound tailback with 4-4 speed, and our Coleman Kid of the Week. And congratulations to Zach Butler of Springdale, our Coleman Kid of the Week. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football tonight from the Marketplace Grill. We have highlights of Class 4A next. Ball brought to you by First Security Bancorp. And we begin our Class 4A highlights in Jonesboro, where the Nettleton Raiders selected number four ranked Batesville as their homecoming date. Nettleton senior Aaron White runs tough up the middle for a first down, but that's as close as the Raiders would get before Batesville's defense stiffened. Then on their first play, the Pioneers go to senior Antonio McCoy, 
picking up 30 yards. He had 186 on the night. A few plays later, Tim Childress gets the touchdown. He's just a junior, and the Pioneers stay undefeated and on a collision course to meet win in five weeks for the conference title. Final score, Batesville 41, Nettleton nada. The Alma Airedales had lost two straight games entering last night's homecoming matchup against Huntsville. It was a scoreless tie late in the second quarter. That's when Alma's quarterback, Byron Bradley, finds Colby Hathaway for the first down. Next play, Bradley out of the shotgun. Hits Jess Riley for another big game. And then with 13 seconds left, Bradley goes downtown. Adam Hobbs for the touchdown. Airedales were up 7-0 at halftime and pulled away late. Final score, Alma 21. Huntsville, seven. Stuttgart whipped Sylvan Hills twice last year, the second time by 17 points in the 4A state championship game. That was last year. After five games, this season belongs to Sylvan Hills. The visiting Bears led 7-0 early in the fourth quarter last night when part-time quarterback Cam and Kareem and tailback Hezekiah Smith played tug-of-war with the football. Smith finally rips it away from the quarterback, sprints all the way down to the Riceburg six-yard line. A couple of plays later, quarterback Arthur Cooley waltzes in for the score. Sylvan Hills led it 14 to zip. But Stuttgart did not quit. The Ricebirds put together an 82-yard scoring drive, highlighted by this 16-yard run from Kendall Griffin. Five plays and a pass interference penalty later. Griffin covers the final five yards for the touchdown. That was the final opportunity for the mistake-prone Stuttgart offense that committed too many turnovers last night. Sylvan Hills would pick up a couple of first downs to run out the clock. Final score, Bears 14, Stuttgart 6. Came and kept the ball for a second, and I saw the hole open up, so I just yanked it from him. And, you know, now I'm back space and opportunity. I took it from there. And here's a look at Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 4A rankings. Harrison should be undefeated when it travels to Greenwood in four weeks. Sylvan Hills is number two, and Greenwood is number three. Some coaches saying the Bulldogs are the best team in the state. Batesville's number four and Wynn is number five. Wynn averages more than 400 yards rushing per game. Alma's number six, then it's Cross at Robinson, Stuttgart, and Bologna rounds out the top 20. The Eagles are the third best team in the rugged 4A East. Arkadelphia begins the second 10. The Badgers are undefeated. Then it's Marlton, Mills, Hot Springs, Lakeside has won three straight and is in a position to make the playoffs. Hope's number 15, followed by West Helena. Whitehall has lost two in a row and is in danger of not making the playoffs. Paragould's 18, BB climbs back into the top 20 after beating Marion last night, and Malvern rounds out the top 20. Now, the United States Marines present the Scholar Athlete of the Week. Stuttgart dual line force Trip Morgan is a double threat. In the classroom, he has a B-plus average, scoring a 24 on his ACT. On the football field, whether he's lined up on either side of the ball, he always comes to play. I like just being out with my friends, playing the game I've loved since third, fourth grade, whenever I could put on the helmet. It's just an adventure and a challenge. This 6'3", 260-pound lineman was one of the main reasons the Rice Birds won last year's 4A state title. We were pretty good in the offensive and defensive lines, and obviously with a young man like that, uh, you got a chance to be successful. Congratulations to Rice Birds' Trip Morgan, the well-deserving Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Thanks a lot, Joe, and congratulations to Trip Morgan of the defending state champ Stuttgart Rice Birds, our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football from the Marketplace Grill tonight. We have highlights of Class 3A straight ahead. Brought to you by Sonic. Undefeated Atkins was looking to take a giant step toward the playoffs last night at Pulaski Oak Grove. Oak Grove was up 7-0 early, though, when junior fullback Darren McFadden scores from 10 yards out. That put Oak Grove up 13 to zip. But Atkins quarterback Brandon Horn would rally the Red Devils in the second half, and Atkins wins a big one. Final score, Red Devils 34, Oak Grove 19. Central Arkansas Christian beat Pulaski Academy last week, and last night against Lone Oak, CAC was looking for its ninth straight win on Mustang Mountain. CAC led 21-7 in the second quarter when Lone Oak's Ty Coleman has the pick, and he takes it all the way back to the two-yard line. That would set up Latrell Doss for the touchdown on the next play, and Lone Oak is within seven, but CAC, led by junior quarterback Jesse Gates, holds on. Final score, 
Mustangs 27, Lone Oak 14. From Mustang Mountain to the Ozark Mountains, where struggling Farmington won the coin toss last night against undefeated Berryville. That's about all that went right for Farmington. Berryville quarterback Stephen Trulove passes to Joseph Bowie for the touchdown. Berryville up 7-0 early. Trulove and the Bobcats were just getting started. The senior quarterback can't find a receiver on this play, runs in for the score. Berryville was up 21-0 in the first quarter. Final score, 5-0 Berryville, 45. Farmington, 14. Homecoming queen Kara Taylor was all smiles last night as Prairie Grove played host to Shiloh Christian in a key one triple A battle. In the second quarter, Shiloh quarterback Nathan Emmert throws deep, but it's intercepted by Kirk Zellner. That would set up the only score of the first half. Prairie Grove drives 65 yards, and Cody Slaughter caps it with a 13-yard touchdown run. On defense, Prairie Grove held Shiloh to just three yards rushing last night. Meanwhile, Prairie Grove's offense ran 33 minutes off the clock. Final score, Prairie Grove 20, Shiloh Christian 8. We're trying to get in highlights of 26 games in this 30 minutes, and here's some bonus coverage from the 4 AAA at West Fork. We're visiting Waldron, jumped to a 14 to nothing lead. That's when West Fork's senior halfback, T.J. Reney, barrels in from three yards out. That cut it to 14 to six, but that was as close as West Fork would get. Waldron wins big and sits atop the four AAA standings. Final score, Waldron 36, West Fork six. Pulaski Academy was shocked last week at CAC and was looking to let go of some anger last night at England. Quarterback Adam Thrash lets go of this bomb to his buddy, Bo Rhodes. And the Bruins had a little trouble handling England's best shots. Final score, Pulaski Academy 53, England 19. A capacity homecoming crowd was on hand last night at DeWitt where the pass-happy Dragons took on the Brinkley Tigers. Brinkley jumped to a six to nothing lead and in the second quarter, check out quarterback Kendall Bean performing his own little homecoming dance. 43 yards later, Bean is finally taken down to the 17 yard line. On the next play, Brinkley's drive dies. Brian Taylor fumbles and DeWitt recovers, but the Dragons would give it right back as Brinkley's Wondell Taylor comes up with the pick. It was six to nothing at the break and Brinkley pulled away in the second half to remain unbeaten in six AAA play. Final score, Brinkley 28, DeWitt 2. Defending three AAA champion Gosnell looking to make the playoffs for the eighth straight year. Visiting Jonesboro Westside last night, Gosnell was up 35 to eight at halftime and increased the lead. Senior fullback David Blunt takes the handoff, goes around the end, it's a 20 yard score. A little bit later, Westside looking to score on the hook and ladder, but Stephen Moore is slammed by Jordan Ricks and the Pirates hold on for a big win. Final score, Gosnell 42, Westside eight. And here's Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 3A rankings. Prescott stays on top after a huge two-point win over Nashville last night. CAC is number two, and then it's Pulaski Academy, the Hillbillies, and Star City moves up after walloping Warren. Rivercrest starts the second five, then it's the Bearcats, Seminoles, Lumberjacks, and Newport continues to struggle without running back Fred Brown. Dollar weighs number 11, there's Nashville. Atkins is undefeated, and the Red Devils are probably playoff bound. Dumas is 14, then it's Waldron, Ashdown, Berryville still undefeated and in control of the one AAA. Pocahontas at 18, followed by Gosnell and Prairie Grove at number 20. More of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by State Farm. The Jesseville Lions beat Boxite for the first time ever last season. Last night, the two teams meeting again with the 5AA title likely on the line at Boxite. Jesseville's defense playing tough early on, facing a fourth down. Boxite's pass is long, but penalty flags are flying at the pit. First down for the home team, and that sets up junior quarterback Zach Dunlap's TD toss to Daniel Guffey. Boxite was up 7-0 with the extra point, and the Miners move into the driver's seat of the 5AA. Final score, Boxite 14. Jesseville, seven. We go from Boxite to the Delta, where 3-0 Gillette took on number four ranked Ryzen with the eight AA title on the line. Opening drive for Ryzen, the Wildcats on fourth and two at midfield. Everybody's thinking fake, including Gillette's senior Daniel Smith. He comes up with a big play for the Wolves. 
Gillette couldn't capitalize, though, and Ryzen starts its next drive at the 21-yard line. Quarterback Aaron Terry would pick up 14 yards along the way, and a half dozen plays later, down at the Gillette 5 now. Terry loses the football. Zach Fisher recovers for Gillette. The Wolves could have used more turnovers in this one, as Ryzen would go on to win it. The Wildcats have won 19 straight regular season games and remain kings of the 8AA. Final score, Ryzen 28, Gillette. 14. Big crowd at the ranch in West Little Rock last night for Arkansas Baptist and the Marshall Bobcats. Baptist junior quarterback Rhett Hatcher fires to Dave Lewis in the end zone for an early 7-0 lead, and Baptist is headed for its fifth playoff berth in seven years. Final score, Arkansas Baptist 45, Marshall 13. Little Rock Christian made the playoffs last year in its first season of varsity football and is likely headed back for postseason play. Last night, the Warriors pounded on Little Rock Lutheran and its quarterback, Will Bishop, and on offense, juniors Drew Johnson and Caleb Camarunas connect for the touchdown, and Christian improves to 3-1 and one in 4AA conference play. Final score, Warriors 42, Lutheran 7. And here is a look at Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 2A rankings halfway through the regular season. Junction City's at number two and Barton stays at number three. Both teams easy wins last night. Ryzen led a much improved Gillette team 28 to nothing in the fourth quarter and won it by two touchdowns on the road last night. The Bearded Bears hold on to the fifth spot, followed by the Little Johns, Hector, Hampton, Hughes, and Lafayette County. Mineral Springs moves up a spot to number 11 after handling Horatio 33 to eight. Bogsite all but clinched its second 5AA title in the past three years last night by holding off Jesseville. Then it's Elkins. Jesseville drops out of the top 10, and there's Gillette holding at number 15. The bottom five looks like this. The Buckaroos, the Go Devils, the Pea Ridge Blackhawks, who just slipped by Mountainburg by six points last night. Augusta's number 19, and then it's top 20 newcomer, Arkansas Baptist. <laughs>